Hey guys, hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about photography and videography. And if you're into that kind of thing, definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. I do post weekly content here on the YouTubes. Today, I'm gonna go over the settings I use in video mode here to shoot YouTube videos with this beauty. This is the Canon EOS R5, and I'm filming this on the Canon EOS R, and the settings I use for both cameras to film my YouTube videos are pretty much the same. So if you have an R5, if you have an R, probably applies to the R6 as well, and you wanna film YouTube videos with your cameras and you wanna know what settings I use, go grab your cameras, and uh, let's take a look at the menu settings. Pause the video now. Yeah, so now you're back with your camera. And uh, let's take a look at these video settings. Now, I just wanna say one thing. One, if your settings are different than mine, leave them down in the comments below and we can talk about the settings and the differences and, and why I use what I use and why I use what you use and we can kind of learn a little something. But uh, before that, I just wanna say that the settings I use on my cameras to film YouTube videos are very simplistic. I wanna be able to film quick, I wanna edit quick, I wanna upload quick, because time is money when you're a creator. I don't wanna be spending hours transcoding or color grading, color matching, lining up audio and all that kind of stuff. I just wanna be able to film, edit, upload, and make it super fast. The thing is, it's YouTube, right? We're not making a feature film, we're not making a cinematic masterpiece, it's it's YouTube, right? It's, it's as, as far as filmmaking goes, it's at the bottom of the barrel. So I got information I wanna to get to you, there's information you wanna get for me, boom, boom, it's a win-win, nice and fast, and the faster I can finish, the faster I can move on to the next project and do the next thing. Obviously, you wanna focus on maintaining a certain level of quality. <laughs> you don't wanna film nonsense and make it really bad, but you know you wanna be able to move quick through whatever your workflow is so that you can you know, move on to the next project and do the next thing because uh, that's important. You gotta keep a good flow going. So yeah, let's jump into the menu and I will show you my video settings. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we're in video mode hit the mode button on top and then you hit the info button to switch between photo and video modes. And here we are, now we're in video mode. And there's two options here that I use for YouTube videos. One is manual. So if I'm in a studio situation like this, I leave my camera in manual. If I'm shooting outdoors vlog style and the, the lighting conditions are always changing, I'm in shutter priority and I switch it to shutter priority. So my shutter speed stays at 50 because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second. All right, so we're gonna get started here with the Q menu and you get to that menu by hitting the Q on the back of the camera or on the back of the LCD screen. And what it does is it pops up this quick access menu here where you have a lot of settings you can change quickly when you're shooting video and it's super handy. So uh, we're gonna go through this menu quickly. We're gonna start at the top left and work our way around. Okay, so the first thing we have on the menu is the autofocus method. And if you hit right and left here with the joystick, this is also a touch screen, so you can, you can touch the screen, but to make it easy, I'm just gonna use the joystick. Uh, you have your zone, focus modes, you have your uh, your spot focus modes, and then you have your tracking. Now with tracking, you have face tracking, you have object tracking right now. We have face tracking enabled. If we hit info, we disable it. Now you wanna make sure it's enabled if you're vlogging yourself or filming yourself talking because you wanna know that the camera is locking onto your face or your eye and filming you. If it's disabled, the camera might lock onto an object that's in front of the camera and focus on that. So depending on what you're trying to shoot, maybe you want it disabled, maybe you want it enabled, but uh, definitely keep it enabled if you're shooting yourself. All right, next up we have movie record size. We hit the set button to get into that menu. And honestly, this is the best menu I have ever seen in any camera for selecting your movie record modes or styles, frame rates. So the top row is all about resolution. Middle row is all about your frame rate and bottom row is all about compression. Now, kudos to Canon on creating this. I think this is absolutely amazing. The only thing is I wish 4K HQ was part of the options here and 120 frames a second was part of the options. You, for those settings, you actually have to go in the menu to set those. Why they're not here, I don't know, but that's just what it is. So let's see what we have here. We have your 8KD, 8KU, 4KD, 4KU, and FHD. And if you don't know, FHD is your 1080p and the, the D and the U stand for DCI and UHD and those are resolutions and you can see that up here in the top left corner so I'll switch back and forth and you can see how the resolution changes. Uh, for YouTube I shoot in the U mode that's UHD and that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio so that's what I film in and 4KU and then down here we have our frame rates we have 24, 30 and 60 frames per second so depending on what frame rate you want you just select it there and then you go down again and here you have your compression. Now the raw and the raw light are only available in 8K. In 4K you get all eye, IPB and IPB light. Now the thing with um, all eye, it's 
you can see here I have seven I have a 64 gig card in the camera and I have 17 minutes of record time if I go to IPB I have one hour and seven minutes so the difference here is huge and let's see if I go to IPB compressed or light I have two hours and 15 minutes so I get the most recording time on the light now here's the thing with all I what happens is the codec doesn't compress the video file too much so it's pretty close to raw and the file sizes are huge and your camera sh or your computer should be able to read those a little easier because they're not as compressed but they are big so your computer is going to have to read through everything so it can be a little tricky or dicey depending on how old your computer is and how fast the processor is and video card and all that stuff ipb is more compressed obviously but it does take a little bit of work for your computer to un uncompress that codec in order to read it and play it back in your scrub window and IPB Lite is the most compressed codec here. And if you're running on an old computer or your computer's having trouble handling the video out of the R5, this is what you want to use, the IPB Lite. For me, I use just regular IPB. So for me, 4KU, 24 frames a second, IPB. Okay, and if you want to shoot 4K HQ, which is really nice, or if you want to shoot uh, 120 frames a second, we're going to go into the menu here and you go into the camera setting and tab one, movie record quality. And here, high frame rate if you enable that you'll be able to shoot at 120 frames a second so you can see that option right here 119.9 p and that is in all i and you can shoot that in 4k d 4k u or full hd so we're going to disable this now disable and if you want to shoot 4k hq this is also where you enable it now you're shooting in 4k hq and these are the options you have for 4K HQ. Okay, so here's a little quirk in the menu system. This option is called 4K HQ mode. So when you enable it, you go into your movie recording sizes, and here it's called 4K D and 4K U fine. So I don't know why it's called fine in one place and HQ in another place. It should have the same name everywhere in the menu so people don't get confused. So Canon, hopefully you can fix that in the next firmware update. And for those of you who want to shoot log for your YouTube videos, scroll over to tab three, go down to log settings, click on it, and then you can select C log or C log three. Let's take C log three. And what you want to do is turn view assist on. Now, when you turn view assist on, you don't see those grayed out log, the log look on the back of the screen. The screen will actually present a lot. So you can kind of have a better idea of what it looks like. If you don't want that and you just want to see that log view, there you go. And then you have, you have your color space and all that stuff. So uh, there's your log settings. Personally, I don't shoot YouTube videos in log unless I really have to, because like I said at the beginning, my whole objective with YouTube videos is to shoot, to edit and export fast, right? Um, when you work with log, you have to work with color grading and that just slows down the whole process. It's an extra step. But uh, if you wanna do that kind of thing, there you go. All right, next up we have audio recording level and this is very important because people will put up with bad video but they will not put up with bad audio. So this is how my, my audio is set to manual right now. So I can manually adjust the sensitivity of the mic and when you set this, what you want to do is set it so when you're talking it starts peaking at about minus 12. So this is 0 dB, minus 12, minus 40. So you just adjust your sensitivity. See right now I'm clipping, I'm way too high. You don't want that. So you want to bring this down to just about minus 12 and then your audio should sound good. If you're in a noisy environment and there's a lot of background noise, maybe you want to bring that down a little further, but uh, those are more advanced audio settings. But in general, you just want to be peaking around minus 12 and you should sound good. Okay, next we have volume and this really doesn't change any of your video settings. This is the volume out. So if you have headphones plugged into your camera, this is how loud they will be or how loud the volume will be. Also the volume coming out of that little speaker here. Next up we have HDR movie recording. Now I don't really record HDR movies. I don't play around with HDR. I don't have an HDR monitor, so it's not really something I look at. If you want to know more about that, maybe check out another video specifically talking about HDR. All right, next we move to the right side and we have movie digital IS. And this is super important if you're vlogging, right? If you have your camera on a tripod, you want to keep it on off. If you are vlogging, you want to keep it on on and then you have enhanced. So if you're really shaky, you put it on enhanced. So you got to remember this camera has IBIS. So it's already got that kind of stabilization. It's got lens IS depending on the lens you have on there. And for extra stabilization, you can turn on this digital stabilization. Now you can see the post-it note in the background getting bigger as I go across. And that's because there's a crop when it's off. There's obviously no crop when you have it on on it's set to a 1.25 crop. 
and when you have it on enhanced it's set to a 1.5 crop and those are acceptable 1.5 is not so bad I mean, you can see here the difference. So if you're vlogging and you know, you're moving fast, walking around, you probably wanna keep it on enhanced or on. Otherwise, keep it off if you're in studio. So there you go, pretty handy. Okay, next up you have your select a card. So depending on what you're doing, you can select your card and what info you want to put where. So that's that. Next up, we have our white balance settings. And this is super important. When I'm shooting solo with just the R5, I usually have it on auto white balance. I find Canon is really good at determining what the correct auto balance or auto white balance is and the skin tones always look good and the colors look good. But here's a pro tip for you. If you're shooting with multiple cameras, even if they are both Canons, I would definitely strongly recommend that you do a custom white balance and set them both to the same thing or set the Kelvin temperature manually. You just click here and you set your Calvin temperature, make sure they're both the same. That way, when you look at the footage in your editing program, they both have the same color balance and everything looks good. Otherwise, one might look too blue, one might look too orange, and it's just a mess. You don't wanna deal with that, trust me. And next up, we have our picture styles. So you have a bunch of different styles. You got faithful, monochrome, user-defined one, two, three, and your auto portrait. You have a bunch of different styles here. And I'm just gonna go off on a little tangent here and I wish Canon put the log settings here in the picture styles because log is kind of a picture style. So it'd be cool if you had that in there. But the other thing here is you have user defined styles. So you can go in here and you can adjust your sharpness, your contrast, saturation, color tone. And this stuff will only affect the JPEGs. The raw should still be raw and you'll be able to do whatever you want with them in Lightroom. But uh, you do have those picture styles at your disposal if you want. Personally, I just keep it on faithful and that's that. I don't worry about it at all. Okay, and last up we have auto lighting optimizer. And what this will do, it's more a photo setting. So if you're shooting JPEGs, it'll sort of smooth out the highlights to midtones. The, the gradation will be smoothed out and it'll bring in some more details in the shadows. It doesn't really have a function in video mode. If you want more dynamic range in video, then obviously just switch everything to the log settings I showed you and you'll get the most dynamic range there. And uh, yeah, so that is it for the Q menu. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a little trick. You can take this full frame readout and turn it into an APS-C size readout with a little cropping, and you can still keep your 4K and 1080p. So notice the size of the post-it note. Now we're gonna go into the menu. We're gonna go into tab one where it says movie cropping. We're going to enable that. And if we go here, you can see that we can only film in 4KD, 4KU, and full HD. No 8K options in this mode. But if we pop out of here, you can see the post-it note is a lot bigger. So now we're using the APS-C size equivalent on the full frame sensor. So if you're filming something at a distance and your lens doesn't have the reach, or let's say you wanna convert your wide angle lens into a portrait lens, you can turn this cropping mode on and you can get a little closer to your subject. So that's a, a cool little trick. Okay, and another handy feature to use is Zebra. So we're gonna pop into the menu and we are going to go to tab number seven and Zebra settings and mine are already on. And uh, those are the settings I use. You're welcome to use those settings or use your own. If you have different ones for whatever reason, you can leave them in the comments down below. But what that does is, let's say we pop up the ISO here. See, as we blow out the background or blow out the, uh, the post-it note, the camera will let you know that it's blown out because you've got the zebra settings there. So here we're good. The exposure should be good here, here, of course, I have to underexpose it so it shows up on this camera here. Otherwise, the LCD here produces too much light. But uh, yeah, so if you're vlogging yourself, you're walking down the street, and you go from sun to shade and your ISO doesn't adjust properly or whatever, you can turn on your zebras and you can see what's overexposed. And obviously, you want to make sure there's no zebra stripes on your screen when you're filming because anything that's overexposed, you probably can't bring back in post. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is display grids. And I think these are super handy, especially when you're framing up shots. And let's see if I can get these display grids to show on here. You can kinda of see that, no. Let's see if I can get some light behind there to blow it out. Okay, so now we got it super bright and you can see the, the grid. So you can see the rule of thirds. You got the three by three grid up there. So if we go to the menu and we go to shooting display info and we go to grid display, here you have your different grids. So if we turn on this one and we go here, now we have the three by three with the X going through it. And if we go to display settings and we go to six by four, 
So now we'll have just a lot of squares everywhere. So if you're shooting architectural, this is great. Me personally, I prefer the three by three because it allows me to line everything up with the rule of thirds easily. So if I'm gonna put the subject matter, I'm gonna put it in one of these spots here where the lines intersect. And that's a quick way to use the rule of thirds for your composition. Okay, for you hybrid shooters, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. And this is also valuable to um, video shooters as well. So we're gonna go into the wrench icon and we are going to go to tab number five and we have custom shooting modes. So you click on that and whatever your settings are right now on your camera, so if you can set it for 4K, you can set it for 1080p, you can set it for 120, 60, whatever you want. So you can register your settings. You click here and you register as one, two or three. Now, here's the thing. If you're a hybrid shooter, and let's see, we're gonna go into photo mode here. So now we're shooting photos and rather than, let's say something happens and you wanna create a video real quick, right? Let's say you're shooting a wedding, for example, and you're shooting photos, 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 and the opportunity for video. And if, once you hit mode and info, it takes too long to switch back and forth. But you can see here that if we go back to photo mode, it says record. So when you hit the red button on top to record, it says movie record with custom functions three settings. So if we go back into video mode and we go into the menu, whatever we register here in custom functions three, if we are in photo mode and we hit the record button up top, that's what it's gonna automatically default to for recording. So you don't have to switch modes if you're a hybrid shooter. You just have to set your custom function three to whatever you need and then just hit record you know, while you're shooting videos. If you're shooting burst videos, you have to wait for those videos or those photos, that burst of photos to transfer off to the memory card. And then you can hit record and it'll record with whatever video setting you set as custom function three. So that's pretty cool. And I have a video about that too. If you wanna check that out, there'll be links somewhere here on the screen. All right, and that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found that informative. This R5 is a pretty cool camera for uh, filming YouTube videos. It's a bit overkill, but uh, I use it as a photography camera for my business as well. If you're using an R6, an RP, or an R, similar settings will appear in those cameras as well. So you can take this video and take that knowledge and apply it to whatever you're shooting with. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, with all that being said, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, definitely subscribe because I post a new video every week. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it handy. If you want to follow me on social media, there's my Instagram and Twitter. Give me a follow there, would really appreciate it. And with all that being said, peace out. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.